Well, it's fairly clear that um, the um, three people attacked uh, Charlie Abdul magazine. Um, but a lot of the reporting has given the impression that this inevitably uh, involved a highly trained unit, uh, perhaps orchestrated from abroad. Now this could be so, but actually murdering ten journalists and two policemen who've been caught by surprise doesn't require great training. And um, once the people have these men have some weapons, um, it doesn't uh, it doesn't have to be organised by anybody much. I look more to the fact that there are four very ferocious civil wars going on in the Middle East, Near East, in Iraq, Syria, Yemen and Libya, that this provides the seedbed for uh, terrorism so-called and this raises the political temperature um, and I think that this is what uh, makes inevitable this sort of attack. I think to analyze it in terms, purely in terms of the position of Muslims in France or some uh, uh, sort of Al-Qaeda type octopus orchestrating from this, uh, this from abroad is uh, to misunderstand largely what happened. That with these wars going on in the Middle East, that it's almost inevitable that various sparks will fly and will end ignite a violent instance in Western Europe. I think one of those sort of surprising things that has happened since 2011, that although the policies of uh, the US and the West Europeans have been disastrous, that nobody really calls them on this, that uh, nobody is really uh, held responsible for the disaster that's, that have happened in Syria and Libya. Uh, in a way, the people do blame Bush and Blair for what happened in Iraq in 2003, letting these wars go on, uh, uh, supporting the rebels in Syria enough so they don't lose, but, uh, um, but knowing that they can't win, in effect means that the wars have gone on. and. Um, you know, ISIS, the Islamic State, is very much the child of war. It's something that grew up in war, that it uh, flourished in war. Um, so, and they didn't think that war would spread. One important element in this that's always been part of Al-Qaeda uh, sort of strategy or view to have these very spectacular attacks, very, very public, um, like 9-11. Uh, obviously, the Charlie Hebdo attack in Paris is far smaller, but it does have that in common with 9-11. Journalists are an attractive target that always uh, creates a lot of publicity. Uh, doing it in Paris is attractive, again, for publicity reasons. Um, so uh, the resources you need for this sort of spectacular are really uh, pretty limited. And you know it completely dominates the news agenda of the world for uh, you know for days, for weeks. At a sophisticated level, as with 9/11, uh, there are probably those who there are certainly those who thought of it as a way of uh, provoking an exaggerated counter-reaction, which would do nothing but good to Al Qaeda. And of course, with 9/11, they wholly succeeded because this led to the invasion of. Afghanistan and Iraq, commitment of American troops. It led to a spectacular gro growth of Al-Qaeda-type organizations. Uh, it led to torture in Abu Ghraib. It led to torture by the CIA. Again, that uh, did nothing but good to Al-Qaeda. This sort of event, if it's deemed to be an act of terror, only succeeds if it provokes an exaggerated overreaction. A sh structural shift in the public against war. Democracy in this country is so flawed, so under the control of corporate interests and big money, that public opinion means very little these days. Mm -hmm.